Today we're going to look at the concepts of voltage and current and how they're related to one another. So we're now going to shift out of electrostatics where the charges couldn't move and we'll shift into electric circuits where we have currents and the charges can move. And electric current is simply a measure of the flow of charge. Just remember that charge is a bit of an abstract concept because it's really a deficit or excess of protons compared to electrons. And the units of electric current you're probably familiar with are the amperes, and we use a capital A for the units of current. The symbol for current will be the letter capital I. So the units are capital A, the current itself is capital I. Now what we mean by one ampere of current, that means that one coulomb of charge is passing a point in the circuit every, every second. So if for instance I pick out this point in the circuit here and I say that the current is equal to say two amperes, that would mean that two coulombs of charge are passing that point every second. Now you've already studied electric circuits a little bit and you probably remember a little bit about voltage and current. A very important question to understanding electric circuits. Does voltage cause current or does current cause voltage? Take a second to think about that. Hopefully you said that voltage causes current. So something called voltage makes the charge move. Often voltage is called electrical pressure. Now if I have a water pipe here and I put a high pressure on one side and I put a low pressure on the other side then I'll get a flow of the water and that flow should be proportional to the difference in pressure P high minus P low. So voltage is going to kind of play the role of pressure. Now voltage is actually connected to energy but remember we could make the water flow through the pipe by using gravitational potential energy. Here I'd have a high gravitational potential energy. Here I've got a low gravitational potential energy and that's going to cause some flow. And that flow would be proportional to the difference in gravitational potential energy which I'll call GPE high minus GPE low. And in fact, any time we get a flow of something, there's always a difference in some other quantity that's causing it. And we saw that we saw that with diffusion last year, where a difference in concentration would drive the fluid flow. So for instance, you might have a high water concentration inside the cell, a low water concentration outside the cell, and that would cause the water to diffuse through the cell membrane. Similarly, when we talked about thermal physics, Whenever we had a difference in temperature, that would cause heat to flow. So a difference in temperature would drive heat flow. And the higher the difference in temperature, the greater the heat flow. And similarly, a difference in electric potential, and this thing called difference, difference in electric potential, that's what we call the voltage. So voltage drives current. So let's come back. The units for voltage are going to be volts. That's why it's called voltage. And a volt is equal to a joule per coulomb. So what that means is that if I consider coulombs of charge on this wire here, right next to the battery, each coulomb of charge would have three joules of electrical potential energy and all the charges down here that are close to the negative side of the battery they wouldn't have any joules of electrical potential energy at all. Just like with the parallel plates when we're at a position of higher voltages the positive charges have more energy and will be pushed towards positions of lower energy. So in a sense this circuit here is kinda like a parallel plate where we have a positive plate and a negative plate and the charges will move from the positive plate to the negative plate from high potential to low potential. When we were studying gravity 
we might have a uh, a mass here that's that's lifted up to some height above the ground and we'd say its gravitational potential energy was mgh and let's just give that a numerical value let's say that that came out to be 10 joules okay now the table's a little bit lower so maybe the gravitational potential energy of the ball if it were there would be only 4 joules and of course if we're on the ground we'd say that the gravitational potential energy was 0 joules if we wanted to talk about the energy available if the ball were to drop onto the table, then of course we'd have to deal with the change in gravitational potential energy, which would be 10 joules minus 4 joules equal to 6 joules. Now, we're going to have to do something very, very similar when we study electric circuits. We'll have, say, a battery here. Let's say it's a 10 volt battery. So there's 10 joules available per coulomb. And that's available from the positive side of the battery. And all of this wire here that's connected directly to that positive side of the battery would, for practical purposes, be at the same potential. So all of this, we would say the potential there would be equal to 10 joules per coulomb. Now, we've got a couple light bulbs to go through. Here's a light bulb, and then there's another light bulb right here. And let's say between the light bulbs, let's say the voltage was 4 joules per coulomb. And then on the other side of the battery, the negative side of the battery, we usually take that to be kind of the grounded side. And we say that the potential here would be equal to 0 joules per coulomb. Now, this where I'm writing the Vs here, that's called the electric potential. But of course, if we want to talk about the current, say, going through the first light bulb, it's not the electric potential that matters, but the electric potential difference. So then we'd want to talk about a delta V equal to 10 minus 4 equals to 6 joules per coulomb. So these Vs that I've written down, V equals 10 joules per coulomb, that's what we'd call electric potential. Whereas a delta V is, of course, what we'd call electric potential difference. And we have to be a little bit careful about this term voltage because it can actually refer to either one of those. And, uh, and that's probably why the IB has chosen not to use the term voltage and they stick to using electric potential and electric potential difference. Uh, voltage can refer to either one of those. You really have to put it into context. There's another key idea that, that's really essential to understand here. Here's a very basic circuit. It's just a light bulb and a, a battery. And this is the way it would look if we drew it as an electrical circuit. So we'd have this symbol here for the battery with a negative side and a positive side. This is the symbol here for a light bulb. We always draw the wires just to make them just to make a nice smooth diagram. The length of the wires doesn't actually matter because we're assuming they have zero resistance anyways. So the length of wires doesn't matter in the way that we draw circuits. But an essential idea that we need to understand is that current is not used up, but energy is in a circuit. This little animation by the uh, Furry Elephant website illustrates really well the difference between current and voltage. And there's something critical that you need to understand here. These black dots that you see moving through the circuit, they're to represent coulombs of charge. Now, a coulomb's is kind of an abstract concept because it's really an excess or a deficit of about a billion billion electrons or protons. But we can imagine these coulombs of charge moving throughout the circuit. And this is supposed to be a light bulb here, another light bulb here, and then a battery up here. Now, the first thing you want to notice is that if I look at the current, the movement of those black dots before the light bulb and after the light bulb, it's exactly the same. In other words, current doesn't get used up. What does get used up is energy, of course. And these red circles that are attached to each one of the, the charges and seem to kind of move along with it, they represent the energy per charge. So because this is a six volt battery, that means that there's six joules per coulomb. And so these charges are kind of carrying with them six joules of energy. 
each one of those coulombs of charge. And you'll notice that it's the energy that gets used up. There's a transformation of energy from that stored electrical potential energy into the light and heat energy of the light bulb. So that's a critical thing to understand, that current doesn't get used up. The current just kind of moves along like a train, but it carries energy. And it's sort of delivering all that energy to the light bulb where it can be used up and transformed. Okay, we have a very simple circuit here, just a battery and a light bulb. Two questions for you. I'd like you to pause the video, read it over, try the question, and then come back for the answer. Okay, so hopefully what you said was that the current in this bottom wire would be from the bulb to the battery. It would be answer A. And the reason for that is that these, these charges, those black dots, have to move around in a complete cycle. And so they actually just keep moving around and around in that complete cycle. Now, is the current in wire B less than, more than, or the same? Well, it's got to be the same. And that goes back to that idea that current doesn't get used up. It's just the energy that gets used up. So the current will be exactly the same in B as in A. Second question for you, I'd like you to pause the video, read it over, try the question, and come back for the answer. Okay, so hopefully what you said was that the brightest bulbs would be A, D, and E, and they would all have equal brightness. And that would be a greater brightness than either bulbs B and C. They, B and C have the same brightness. And the reason for that, so there's a couple ideas that we need to understand here. One would be that the brightness of the bulb will be directly proportional to the amount of current that's going through the bulbs. Now in this second circuit, remember the current doesn't get used up, so the current's going to be the same all the way through this complete cycle. So those two have to have the same brightness. Now we have to use the idea of voltage or electric potential difference to understand which bulbs are going to be the brightest. Now this first bulb here, it has the full voltage of the battery across it. And these two bulbs also have the same full voltage of the battery across it. So for instance, if this is a 10 volt battery, then all of this here at the top, all that connected piece of wire is at 10 volts. And all this connected piece of wire, it's all at zero volts. So both bulbs get delta V, the same 10 volts across. And of course, here we've also got 10 volts across if this is a 10 volt battery. 10 volts will be across that bulb. Now in this case here, the voltage would split up. So we'd get a, say, 5 volts across that first battery, first bulb, and another 5 volts across the second bulb. And so they would drive less current through those bulbs. Let's summarize the big ideas from the video. So we had the idea that voltage causes current. So in a sense, the voltage is more fundamental than the current. It's kind of like the relationship between force and motion, right? Force is really more fundamental because it's the forces that cause all those changes in motion. So we want to think of the voltage as being the electric pressure or electric pressure difference. In the same way that if we have a pressure difference across a pipe, then air will flow through that pipe. Similarly, if we have an electric pressure difference across a wire or a voltage across a wire, then we're going to get charge flow. We're going to get current. So the current is the flow of charge. And the units for electric pressure difference, the units would be the volts, which are equal to joules per coulomb. And for current, that would be the amperes, which are equal to coulombs per second. So a current of one ampere means that one coulomb of charge is passing a point each second. So if we're talking about five volts or five joules per coulomb, then we're kind of saying that 
at some point in space, if the charge is placed there, the charges would have five joules of energy for every coulomb that's placed there. Some other point in space, maybe it's at one volt. That means that charges at that location would have one joule of energy for every coulomb placed there. Now, because wires essentially have a zero resistance, any place along a continuous piece of wire would have the same voltage, the same number of joules per coulomb. So a long continuous piece of wire, V is constant. So then we've got to kind of ask ourselves, how did the electric pressure change? How did the voltage change? Well, there must have been some sort of resistance here, some sort of blockage to the flow. And what that means is that there is a loss of energy, or energy is dissipated. The charges had more energy here than they did over here. So energy gets used up, energy gets dissipated. But notice here that the current doesn't. The current will be the same. If it's two amps here, it'll be two amps over here. The current doesn't get used up, it's the energy that gets used up. And finally, when we talk about voltage, we usually mean electrical potential difference. So we would talk about the voltage between these two points as being equal to four joules per coulomb. And it's that electric potential difference, that voltage, that drives the current, drives the charge flow. So we would refer to the five joules per coulomb as electric potential. The one joule per coulomb would be electrical potential. Uh, but the delta V, the electric potential difference or voltage would be four joules per coulomb. And that's really what drives the current. So please take the time to like videos, to make comments, to ask questions, become a subscriber, sign up for notifications, become a member or a Patreon. And that's all for today, folks. Thank you very much.